Good evening, and welcome to the creepy little book. It's a channel with a focus on the fringe and mysterious, everything from the esoteric to the extraterrestrial, from the spiritual to the supernatural, and all that lies in between. I'm your humble host, Pete, here to guide the conversation. Tonight's topic is a fun one, a strange one from the annals of UFO history, a tale of a film, two films in fact, the McPherson tape. We'll discuss this tonight and all the fascinating aspects of this found footage film. It appears to depict a family besieged by extraterrestrials and their subsequent disappearance. All this we will discuss tonight. But first, let me take a moment and say thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you being here tonight. I want to say thank you to our moderator, Tina Tomaszewski. Thanks for being here tonight, Tina. Much appreciated. I got a super chat coming in already. I'd like to see that. Eli McGinn's. I hope I'm saying that right. McGinn's. Thumbs up for Dom99. Thank you, Eli. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. And thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you for tuning in. We are talking about the tale of the McPherson tape tonight. Now, <clears throat> this is a creepy story uh, of, that comes to us from the 80s and 90s, in fact. Late 80s, late 90s kind of, kind of deal here. Uh, found footage film that uh, purports to show a family terrorized by extraterrestrials during a birthday celebration. Now, the very interesting aspect of this film is that the, the film was made <clears throat> in 89. And it was written, directed, and produced by a man named Dean Aliotto through a indie syndicate productions uh, company. It's presented as a found footage portraying the final recordings and last known whereabouts of a Connecticut family named the Van Heeses just before they are abducted by extraterrestrials. Dean Ariotto produced the film on no budget using $6,500 from the company Indie Syndicate Productions. Now, it had a limited release through Axiom Films. Designed to appear to be a genuine 1983 home video recording, the film depicts aliens abducting a Connecticut family as they celebrate a relative's fifth birthday. Unfortunately, the materials for the film were destroyed in a warehouse fire at the distribution company, precluding the film's wide release on video. Now, here's what happened. The film's right. It's destroyed in a warehouse fire. These materials, everything for it. So then years would go by years go by. It was never had a proper release. Uh, it was a, it was basically it's a horror film. It's closer to America's Funniest Home Videos because of the relatable chemistry between the brothers who fight over stupid things, the dialogue constantly overlapping, and every character fighting for screen time by talking louder than each other. But the director Dean Aliotto would mention this was a common criticism they would face from distributors at the time. Today, the idea of overlapping dialogue is par for the course in movies and film, but back then it wasn't so much the case. So, it turns out that no one in 18, 1989 wanted a found footage movie. He was rejected by everybody in town, but he found a distributor. So, the warehouse burned down and destroyed his master tape and all the artwork for the film. Devastating for a first-time director. But few get to experience what Dean Aliotto has. Five years later, new life was breathed into the McPherson tapes. He got a phone call from a guy saying he just found this footage. Aliotto says, laughingly, the guy actually said that to him. That the, the, he found this footage. Uh, it tells the story of him finding the footage and then the footage being previewed at the International UFO Congress Convention, the biggest UFO convention in the world, and the movie was presented without credits, as if it was real. So it was played at the UFO convention like it was real footage. 
but it was a found footage film made to seem like it was supposed to be real. You understand? So they make the movie. They store it in the warehouse. The warehouse burns down. The master tape's destroyed. The artwork's destroyed. Somehow the film finds its way into the hands of a UFO Congress convention where it is screened without credits and is believed to be true. But it gets better. There were TV shows that wanted to do stories on the movie, including Unsolved Mysteries, Hard Copy, and a show on Fox called Encounters. Now, the mystery solved at this point. But they went with Encounters anyway, and they did a seven-minute segment on the show called The World's Greatest UFO Hoax for their program in the early 90s. So Arioto went on TV and debunked his own movie. Except the debunking only fueled the urban legend of the encounter. And the film segment on the show Encounters only made the film more popular, which led to a TV remake with Dick Clark Productions at UPN. After showing a TV executive the Encounters segment, Dean Alioto got described uh, as what he describes his first Hollywood deal one with a sizable budget increase. They told him he had $1.25 million. He said he had a full-blown anxiety attack because he never handled that much money. But the TV remake was made with a company that did the effect for the X-Files working on the ships and the aliens. This movie would be named Alien Abduction Incident at Lake County, and it would air in 1998. <clears throat> Both of these precede the Blair Witch Project. And this was a huge rating success. It caused the network to add more footage to the broadcast, including interviews with real UFO experts talking about very fake alien footage. It included a segment in which Dean Aliotto himself appears as a special effects director and endorses the authenticity of the movie. Things got blown out of proportion, Dean Aliotto would laugh. News channels exposed the movie, did exposés on the movie. People started believing the original VHS footage was real and the government was hired to make the TV remake as part of a disinformation campaign to discredit the original. But in all the time since, Alioto has still gone around online debunking the hundreds of posts that claim his movie was real. He's shown behind the scene pictures of the actors who played aliens. But because the master tape was burned, in order to remaster the film for the fantastic uh, sc for a screening that they did, he had to go online and find a bootleg copy of the full film uh, from a mom and pop advanced screenings and ripped his own movie. Because back then they used to send advanced screeners out to mom and pop video video stores. So that is basically, in a nutshell, the story of the first McPherson team. <clears throat> the plot basically goes like this. On the evening of October 3rd, 1983, the Van Hees family gathers in the Connecticut mountains to celebrate the birthday of five-year-old Michelle. The family consists of Ma Van Hees, her three sons, Eric, Jason, and Michael, Eric's wife, Jamie, his daughter, Michelle, and Jason's girlfriend, Renee. Michael used a handheld camera to record the night's events, much to the amusement and irritation of his family. The early evening passes relatively uneventful as the family celebrates. However, after briefly turning off the lights for Michelle's birthday candles, they discover they will not turn back on. Eric, Jason, and Michael inspect the breaker outside and are startled by a red light that passes overhead. Curious, they walk to a neighboring property to investigate. While walking, they reveal their discussions that their mother has become an alcoholic since their father's death, despite their attempts to help her. The three eventually come across what appears to be an extraterrestrial spacecraft in the woods and are shocked to see three diminutive aliens standing outside. However, they flee after the aliens notice their lights. Returning to the house, they alert their family, lock their doors, and load their shotguns, but are divided whether or not they should remain in the house or leave. They see more red lights through their window and theorize the alien craft may have left. After calming down, they continue to the party, but they notice that all their watches have stopped. With the evening getting late, they conclude the festivities, and Eric and his family attempt to leave. Soon after, Jason and Michael come to one of Michelle's drawings, which resembles one of the aliens they saw in the woods. They rush Eric and his family back inside and are terrified when the aliens attempt to enter the house through the windows and chimney. Eric manages to shoot and seemingly kill one after hearing it on the roof, which appears to dissuade the aliens from further attempts. He brings the alien's body inside and places it in a back room despite the other's protests. 
After debating, Eric and Jason plan to retrieve Eric's truck and bring it to the front door so the family can escape. They do not return. So the others go after them, but only find the truck empty and their shotguns. They flee back to the house, dragging a hysterical Jamie inside. They come to the hopeful conclusion that Eric and Jason must have gone for help in an attempt to occupy themselves by playing cards. Soon after, they narrowly prevent Renee and Ma from opening the front door in separate attempts. Both have no memory of the incident and claim they heard a voice in their head telling them to open the door. Michael also discovers the alien's body is gone and the back door is open. After securing the house once more and turning up the radio to block out voices, the others finally convince Michael to put down his camera and resume their card game. From its position across the room, the still recording camera violently glitches and records the three aliens emerging from the back room. The tape ends as the aliens close in on the unaware family. The film claims that the Van Hees' whereabouts are still unknown, and the viewers should contact the producers if they have any information. So that was the original film. That's the original story. Now, that there was a remake. Like I said, they remade this. I, I mean, look, if you've ever seen this, this is pretty comical. It is pretty comical stuff. I mean, you will get a good laugh out of it if you go if you watch it. It's not scary. <laughs> it's not. It's goofy as all. It is a goofy film. Now, the second one's probably a little scarier because it had a bigger budget. But the first one is goofy as all get out. John says, man, Pete, you are hitting it out of the park with this miniseries, if you will. Seems like you are right on target just before the disclosure coming up. Uh, you know what? I, I'm just I'm just doing what I do, John. I'm just doing what I do. I got to come up with something to talk about every night. So tonight, the McPherson tapes is only because we were prompted by our discussion last night. <clears throat> uh, this came up. You know, we were talking about the uh, Kelly Hopkinsville encounter, and this kind of came up a little bit because, you know, some people were questioning whether or not the Hopkinsville story was this one or the one with the goblins. Uh, so I said, you know what, let me cover this one as well, because it is a fascinating story. Uh, Pseudonoid says this sounds a lot like um, science. Yeah, I mean, it could it could very well have influenced signs. It could very well influence signs. Uh, now, Tina's asking, was that supposed to have happened in Montana? The first film set in Connecticut. <clears throat> the first film is set in Connecticut. Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure where the second film is set. We'll have to. Well, no, you're right. The second film is in Montana, Lake County, Montana. The first film's Connecticut. The second film's Montana. But they're basically the same movie. It's a remake. Oh, Darius Munchausen, thank you very much for $1.49. Much appreciated. Thank you. Got the popcorn ready. I like to see that. Got that popcorn ready and rocking and ready to go. Sydney Gardner says, I'm glad you're covering both people. Well, thank you. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, you know, I mean, look, it's not a super deep topic. But it's a fun one. And it's, a, it's one that has to do with the alien mythology. Of course, you know, there was a time when there were circles that believed this story to be true. And, and I find that comical, uh, because I mean, it, it's, it's really wildly, uh, it, it's funny <clears throat> ginger Viking Jesus for a dollar 49. Got that salt ready for that popcorn. Thank you, ginger. Much appreciated. Pseudonoid suggests the upcoming disclosure is a psyop next level. In my opinion, I mean, well, who knows? I, I'm not really hopeful that we're going to see anything about this disclosure. I think that either it's going to get pushed back or it's going to be redacted or it'll never be released to the public. I think those are the three options we're looking at here. So don't worry so much about Project Bluebeam. I think exactly what's going on here is is a whole lot of nothing. I think that we've probably already seen the lion's share of what we're going to get out of this uh, upcoming report. But, uh, you know, that's me being pessimistic. That's just me being a little pessimistic because I, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know what to expect, but I think it's going to be heavily redacted, even if it is released. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Trav Steelman, who was the guy back in the 90s that took an odd video of a black craft in the woods and went crazy claiming it was real? can't think of his name, but it was weirdly goofy as hell and neat all in one. Uh, you know, I'm not sure. Maybe somebody else in the chat recalls. 
and they could help us out with that one. I, I'm not really sure about that one, Trap Steel Man. Um, with this one, it wasn't a black triangle. Uh, it was it was not. Uh, it was it was definitely not. But it was uh, at least with the second movie. It was the team that did the X Files special effects. You know. Uh, let me see here. Just getting caught up on the chat for a second. I'm, I'm just a little behind here, folks. I'm just getting caught up. Here we go. <clears throat> Mark Adelphia Music, how are you tonight, Mark? How, how am I? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. I was listening to some motivational speeches before the show tonight. I was listening to a little motivational speech to get me all pumped and going. Get me all pumped up and ready to do the show. So a little motivational stuff, a little, uh, little motivational thing. Get me going. That's right. Got to stay motivated. Got to be motivated. Got to be determined. Got to buckle down. Got to put into work. Got to put into work because that's what we're building something here. We are building something here. We are not done yet. In fact, I think I need to pick up like four subscribers. If I could get four subscribers tonight, four, four new ones. If you're new, subscribe. Absolutely subscribe if you're new. I need to pick up four subscribers to hit 30,500. Four subscribers I need to get to that point. 30,500. Four of you. Four of you I need to subscribe. Team Tim Zussi said we got to turn it around. Well, you know what? That's all part of it, Team. I got to turn it around. And I've been doing, I've been doing my three mile walks during the day. Getting out there, trucking around, trying to drop some LBs, trying to get back in shape. <clears throat> yes, you're right, Mark Adelphi Music, because you're good enough, you're smart enough, and doggone it, people like you. That's right. That is absolutely right. Michelle O'Rourke, how you doing tonight? Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for being here. Yes, we are talking about the tale of the McPherson tapes. We just discussed the original McPherson tape. The 1989 uh, tape that was meant to look like a 1983 piece of found footage, uh, which did fool people at the UFO Congress who thought it was the real thing, which inspired people in the television industry to do an expose on it, which led to them funding the money for a remake. Sudenoid, I've subbed on every alt me gods. Well, thank you. That, I really appreciate that, Sudenoid. That's what I'm talking about. Team Tomazuzzi says, yes, please tell your friends we got to help Pete out. Yes, look, absolutely. Tell your tell people you know about this stream. Tell people you know about this stream. Let them know about it. Say, listen, hey, I check out this guy on YouTube every night. Maybe you want to check it out. It's called Creepy Little Book. If you like strange, fringe, and unusual topics presented in a fun way, then you might enjoy the show. So just let somebody know about it. See if they'll be interested. You never know. If there's a person in your life you talk about this kind of stuff to, definitely tell them about the stream. <clears throat> you know, definitely. Definitely let them know. Uh, Dr. Jonathan Reed says 89369. Dr. Jonathan Reed, uh, ufologist, right? <clears throat> ufologist i believe uh i i i uh, i think he's an author i think he's an author and a ufologist but i don't i don't know much more about him beyond that <clears throat> jupiter's realm i didn't even know they made a remake yes they did a remake for the upn television network in 1998 almost 10 years after the original film had been created uh, but with an ex exponentially larger budget. So it is a larger budget version of the McPherson tapes and originally aired January 18th of 1998. Uh, it's uh, centers around a Tommy, a teenager in Lake County, Montana, who's making a home movie of his family's Thanksgiving dinner when they are attacked and ultimately abducted by extraterrestrials. So it is a little different. It's not the birthday party. It is the uh, Thanksgiving dinner. 
It is the Thanksgiving dinner. Mayorto, I just subscribed from other account. Thank you, Mayorto. I do appreciate that. Thank you so much. We're, we're, we're pumping up the numbers here. <clears throat> uh, Merticule Vitriol, can you do a topic? What if the devil is good and God is the villain of the Bible? Uh, well, I mean, yeah, that would be like Luciferianism, I guess, if we wanted to go that way, where the, Satan is kind of a Prometheus type figure. Uh, that could be an interesting topic. Uh, Promethean Lucifer. Yeah, that's something we could visit. Merticule Vitriol. Interesting suggestion. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Trash Steel Man says, Dr. Reed and the Screaming Alien Hoax. Thank you, Stephen Miller. Pete, check it out. I'll jot it down. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, Dr. Reed and Screaming Alien Hoax. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Always love a good suggestion to check stuff out. So thank you so much. <clears throat> well, let's see here. Uh... Oh, Michelle O'Rourke with some good news. Michelle O'Rourke is with child. Congratulations, Michelle. That is great news. Glad to hear that. Congratulations to you. Look at that. There you go. A little baby. Congrats. We're glad to hear it. <clears throat> so A9369 says, Oh, wait a minute. You're okay. Wait, A9369. You're talking about Freddy. Dr. Reed supposedly went on a hike with his dog. Okay. He came across a floating triangle in the woods. Here's a dog crying. The dog and the alien are locked in mortal. <clears throat> Com conflict then he hit the alien with a log and the alien he thought was dead but then he was violently ill for hours laying in the woods soiling himself and throwing up all over himself <clears throat> and then he took the alien back and put it in a freezer in his house you're talking about freddy the alien that's who you're talking about i didn't know that guy was a doctor i think that these, these are we confusing two stories here Because I don't think this guy had a camera on him when he when he came across this alien. Oh, Mrs. Born Bullish is also pregnant. Due in August. Congratulations to you, Mrs. Born Bullish. That's good news. <clears throat> so look, it's, look it's, got, it's baby fever around here. <clears throat> A pseudonoid says, one time X-Files made an episode in my hometown. It accurately portrayed the local youth as superpowered villain types. <laughs> A9369, yes, filmed the alien, brought the dead alien back with him, threw it in the freezer, filmed the alien body. Alien screamed, had a device on him. The alien, no, I remember the alien's voice because he recorded the alien's voice and it sounded like somebody ripping duct tape. That's what it sounded like when the alien was talking. And he said it used to hurt his head when the alien would speak. And then the man in black came for the alien, but he said Freddy had escaped before they, they, they got him. I am familiar with this. Yes, I know what you're talking about. <clears throat> um, Mer Merticule Vitriol continues, because look, God clearly took free will from the Pharaoh. God being all-knowing had to test Job to see if he was loyal, etc. A lot of it, none of it makes sense. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, there is a uh, real... Uh, sentiment out there that God is a little bit different in the Old Testament than he is in the New Testament. I mean, that sentiment does exist. More fire and brimstone, a lot less love thy neighbor, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, I mean, that is uh, that is part of it. Uh, 
Yeah, Trav Steelman. Yeah, so that's the one we're talking about. Yeah, Freddy the Alien. That is really strange stuff. Okay, just checking, uh, just checking the chat here. Just checking the chat. Uh, Glennis uh, B has seen the video of the alien in the freezer. Okay, I've never watched the video of it. Like I, I've listened to a podcast about it where I first heard of it. Uh, it was a very humorous co- podcast as well. Uh, it was actually the unbelievable podcast called the episode's called Alien in the Freezer, uh, and it's about that whole incident. It was it was very comical. They they did a very funny. Uh, you know, cause the guy keeps talking about throwing up and filling his pants after he whacked the alien. He was so violently ill. He was laying in the woods and he was just getting sick over and over again. And he keeps describing it as like filling his pants. Like I quote filling his pants. Like, so it's just, it's just terrible. <laughs> hey, Ben Melody, are you here? I think you're probably familiar with what I'm talking about here. When I'm talking about this, I wonder if you're here. Uh, oh god that's funny stuff uh that is funny stuff i'm sorry it just cracks me up to no end the the whole alien in the freezer thing anyway uh the McPherson tapes, like I said, there was a, a, a the second one. The second one's set on Thanksgiving. So this one appears to be a normal home video of the McPherson family gathered for Thanksgiving dinner. The footage is interrupted with occasional expert interviews on the subject of UFOs and alien abductions and other topics like that. After the power goes out during dinner, Kurt and Brian go outside to check the fuses. Tommy follows with his camera. After finding the fuses charred and partially melted, they head into the woods to investigate a transformer which is throwing sparks. They find a UFO in a nearby field, and as they watch from the tree line, two aliens exit the ship and use a ray gun on a cow. Despite their attempt to remain hidden, the three men are spotted. One of the aliens' weapons raises his weapon and fires and burns Brian's hand. They rush back to the house and try to convince their incredulous family to flee while there's still time. They see lights in the sky and a furtive figure outside the window, but the family refuses to believe the brother's story until Tommy plays them the tape. Suddenly, High-frequency screech incapacitates everyone but five-year-old Rosie. When it stops, Kurt straps a flashlight to his shotgun and decides to get everyone in his truck and leave. The truck will not start. The battery has melted, so they return to the house. As they take stock of the situation, they hear scrabbling sounds on the roof and discover an alien has made its way in through an open window. Kurt leads the way upstairs and begins to search. Tommy takes the opportunity to go into his bedroom and change his soiled pants when he is ambushed by an alien. It puts him in a trance investigates his camera, and then slips away, leaving Tommy with no memory of the encounter. Tommy is awakened by the shouts of Kurt, who has trapped an alien in an adjacent room. They are greeted by a laser shot, and Kurt responds with his shotgun. Everyone retreats downstairs. A ball of light floats into the house and puts Renee into a coma. Kurt and Brian go outside and try to swap the truck battery in a final attempt to get the family to safety and take Renee to a hospital. Seemingly minutes after they leave, gunshots are heard outside and the lights begin to flicker. Those who remain experience a sense of vivid auditory and visual hallucinations in which Rosie seems to be immune. Tommy puts his camera down, and in a moment when she is left alone, Rosie takes the shells out of the remaining shotgun. Later, everyone except Rosie feels a burning sensation in the back of their necks where they discover triangle-shaped burns. The group becomes hysterical as more shots are heard. They go outside where Tommy discovers a couple of mangled shotguns, but not his brothers. The camera pans towards the woods to reveal strange lights and two approaching figures. Everyone races back into the house where they barricade themselves in. The camera is dropped and goes black. Tommy then gives a tearful testimony and wonders if he will live to see tomorrow. He searches through all the rooms and suddenly comes face to face with an alien. He drops the camera and stands frozen in a trance-like state. The tape stops and the family and their guests have not been seen since an alternate ending is presented in an extended version of the film made available in the initial t- television alien airing in it the family is seen re-entering the house and after the death of renee the survivors gather around the table to eat in order to keep up their strength and spirits it is implied that rosie unlocks the front door because the aliens gain entry to the house and subdue the family in what appears to be psychic powers the aliens disable the camera and the family is seen following the aliens out of the house so again this one was directed again by dean alioto 
and the film portrays a family named the McPherson's being abducted by extraterrestrials in Lake County, Montana. It is a remake of the McPherson tapes, a home video style pseudo documentary thriller filmed and created by the same director. The fact is that a remake of another tape led to confusion over which was the original and a controversy over the original could be authentic. This was due to the fact that most were unaware the McPherson tape was a work of fiction. The entire incident was recorded on a home video camera by the actor who played the McPherson's 16 year old son. And it was intended to appear as the film of actual events. The program caused a level of confusion and controversy upon its initial telecast that echoed earlier reality muddling incidents, such as Orson Welles war, the world radio broadcast, which we spoke about the other night in our mass hysteria episode. Very much like Orson Welles, the alien abduction incident in Lake County uh, aired on UPN immediately following real vampires exposed, which offered a tabloid like investigation of vampires, leading some viewers to believe that alien abduction incident in Lake County was also portraying real events. Another way in which this video misled its viewers in the ways which it was filmed. The style was soon made popular through the Blair Witch Project, but UFO researchers, including Stanton Friedman, were not informed of the nature of the show by the program's producers and controversy and confusion also centered on a lack of disclaimers. The program was believed to be based on factual events. However, supposed the original tape that the program was based on was actually another science fiction thriller movie by the same name. Debate over the nature of the program or the hoax nature of the program occurred on internet chat rooms and bulletin boards where the program status as fiction was exposed. Thanks to the character of Tommy McPherson being linked to an actor named Christian Ayer. Also, they interviewed the Lake County Sheriff Department and said no one named McPherson lived in Lake County at the time. Some viewers continued to insist portions of the program were fabricated, but the McPherson's itself were real and that the program itself was evidence of a conspiracy. The show was subsequently broadcast in New Zealand on TV New Zealand Channel 2 with a disclaimer that its authenticity was still a topic of dispute in the United States. Nevertheless, the cut the show's final credits, preventing New Zealand audiences from noting the McPherson's were played by actors. <clears throat> so there we go. For the uh, found footage film, it was called Alien Abduction Incident in Lake County, The McPherson Tape. Not to be confused with the original, The McPherson Tape. But don't let me confuse you for a moment because we've reached the halftime point of the show. Hold on one moment here. Hey there. Hi there. Hey now, I want to thank you for being here tonight. And I also want to ask you to do me a favor. If you're new here, please subscribe. Like I said, I am four subscribers away from at 30,500. So we want to get that nice round number that says 500 right after that nice round number that says 30. And I need four subscribers to do that. So if you're new, please subscribe. Likewise, this is the portion of this show where I ask you to check out the description of this video where you'll find links to my Twitter, email, Instagram, and I hope you'll follow me on social media on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, you can also shoot me an email if you're so inclined. That's down there for your, uh, for your convenience. I've got a second channel. It's called Dark Sayings. I do audiobook recordings over there. And if you're inclined to like audiobook recordings, you can subscribe there and check them out. If you'd like to support the stream, I've got two ways to do that. One is the Teespring store, where you'll find tons of merchandise inspired by the esoteric and the extraterrestrial, the spiritual and the supernatural, and all that lies in between. I've got Hermes Trismegistus on t-shirts. I've got Joan of Arc on tote bags. I've even got the Hollow Earth on leggings. If you are interested in Metatron's Cube or perhaps the Sigil of the Gate, you know, maybe you want to check it out. Maybe you'll find something you like at the Teespring store. Might I recommend the Alchemy shirt? Or... Some of the other fine things, like the Resist Reptilians merchandise. So, if you're not so inclined there, would you want to help out the show in another way? You can sign up on Patreon for just a dollar a month. That's a quarter a week, less than the price of a cup of coffee. I hope you feel what goes on here every night, including holidays and weekends, worth the price of a cup of coffee, and you'll consider signing up. Uh-oh. Well, that didn't work. I dropped my dinger. There we go. Oh, just a second. Just a second. We have some new music starting. We can't have that happen now. <laughs> I tried to hit my bell with my mouse. <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway, so 
that's pretty much the gist of the McPherson tapes uh, we were talking about here tonight. Now, <clears throat> I'm wondering, do any of you remember the 1998 broadcast on UPN? Were any of you like, uh, you know, paying attention to television at that time period? Ape and Melody, there you are. A- Ape and Melody, good stuff. Uh, I don't know if you just heard me mention this. I was talking about the unbelievable podcast episode of uh, the Alien in the Freezer with Freddie where we get the line throwing up and filling my pants. <laughs> Good stuff. That came up earlier, Ape Melody. So if you missed it, there's a little a little bit back earlier in the show, but it was a lot of fun stuff. We were talking about uh, Freddy, the alien in the freezer. Uh, and I was recommending the a- episode of the unbelievable podcast to everybody to check out uh, because it's hilarious. <clears throat> and while you're at it, check out the unbelievers podcast. They just put up a new episode today about the 37th parallel and how it's the UFO highway. And it was fantastic. Jack D whiskey is hooked on the unbelievers podcast. Now I'm glad to hear that. I absolutely love it. I mean, where else can you find comedy and uh, UFO stuff? So eloquently done. I'm just a big fan. So yes, the unbelievers podcast and their predecessor, the unbelievable podcast also great as well. Big fan of both. <clears throat> Android 17 hate it when you drop your dinger. Yeah, I dropped my dinger. It wasn't attached to my, my bell. I, I don't know. So I dropped it. I heard it hit the floor and it's, it's on the other side of the desk. So I can't reach it. Red cap goblin says, I can't believe I missed the goblin episode. Well, we I, I've done a couple goblin episodes, red cap goblin. I've done one on just goblins themselves and goblin mythology. Uh, and then we did one on the Kentucky goblins. Uh, that was the incident down in Kelly Hopkinsville, Kentucky. So, uh, so yeah, if you uh, check out the main page here on uh, YouTube and you go to that little search bar, there's a little spyglass. So if you go to the Creepy Little Book homepage on YouTube, there's a little spyglass on the right-hand side. And if you type in goblins, you're going to get all that stuff. Mark Delphi Music says, always chasing them goblins. That's right. Thank you, Tina Tempazuski, for linking the Unbelievers podcast. Like I said, I'm a huge fan, and I've been fortunate enough to be on their show twice. Uh, they are a great group of people. I love their work. I think they're so funny. Um, and it is it is something I look forward to every week is their podcast. You know, it's just great. Oh, yeah. Mark says we're always chasing the goblin. That's right. <laughs> Another monster says, well, it's all demons. That's right. Well, that's what Adrian T would say if Adrian T was here. Adrian T still on his hike out there. We, well, we hope Adrian's doing well on his hike, and we'll be glad to see him when he gets back and hear stories of his trail adventure, you know. Prairie Fire. Hello, folks. Hello, Prairie Fire. How you doing? Thanks for tuning in tonight. And Tina's just dropped the link, Red Cap, to the Goblins episode we did a, a while back. How long ago was that one? I don't even recall. Probably a couple months now. Bray Fire, Pete, saw you on Night Terrors. Oh, excellent. Thank you so much for uh, coming on by and checking us out here. I had a great time on Night Terrors. Um, yeah, that was that was, that was a really good show. Uh, Bill had a lot of great questions for me, and uh, I just had a lot of time, a lot of fun, uh, you know, with a hot fire interview that he did. It was a great time. But thank you for being here, Prairie Fire. I do appreciate it. Elroy Shredding says, I'm envious of Adrian T out there playing with the nice wolves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, out there playing with the nice wolves. Another monster says, last night, or at least the Hopkinsville Goblin was. Oh, uh, 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 in regard to the uh, uh, demons. Uh, yeah, well, the, even the people in, in Kelly uh, weren't sure what they were dealing with. They didn't know if they were, uh, if they were, uh, you know, extraterrestrials or if they were, you know, demons from another world. It's just strange stuff here. Cow's cookies or a sad squonk. Squonk. Okay, for those of you who don't know, squonk is a uh, fearsome critter. That is native to Pennsylvania. Squonks are supposedly very ugly and wrinkly, and they spend all their time crying because they're so gruesome. And uh, that's their thing. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Trav Steelman, have I done one on the Georgia Guidestones? It was just up there a couple weeks ago, and it's apocalyptic weirdness. Yeah, uh, Trav Steelman, we've done the Georgia Guidestones. Um, I'm sure, Tina, if, if you don't mind, uh, you can pull it up and drop it in the chat for me. Um, yeah, I mean, we've, we've done a lot of uh, a lot of topics here. It gets harder and harder to come up with something new every night to talk about, I'll tell you that much. Might have to revisit some things every once in a while, but that's okay, because sometimes people miss them, and, it's, and you know, it's good to catch up. It's good to catch up again. Or sometimes we don't get a chance to cover a topic as in depth as I'd like to, and it will require a second viewing. I also want to give a shout out to my buddy uh, uh, Jerry Hicks over at Dark Wolf's Den show. Uh, he's been posting, and he just posted a new one today. I think it's the Russian Book of Aliens he's working on. Very, very good stuff. Very good stuff. Give us more cryptids, Pete, says Jack D. Whiskey. You want more cryptids? Well, I'll jot that down. We can do more cryptids. I like talking about cryptids. <clears throat> Thank you, Tina. There's a Georgia Guidestone link there, uh, Trav Steel Man, if you're interested. More cryptids. I'm going to jot that down. More cryptids, Pete. More cryptids. Exclamation point. Yes. <clears throat> and Freddy the Alien. I've never covered Freddy the Alien here, except for what we talked about now. Uh, Prairie Fire, we've done the Jersey Devil. Yeah, I almost redid the Jersey Devil, and then I had to search and saw that I did it already. Uh, so instead of doing the doing the Jersey Devil, I did the Fearsome Critters of Legend. Uh, I, I think it was called uh, Creatures of Folklore and Legend. Uh, that was I was going to do Jersey Devil, realized I already did it, and then I was inspired to do Fearsome Critters and like loggers had come up with back in the 1800s. Mark Duffy Music says, I love cryptids, Fresno Nightcrawlers. That's right. Oh, Prey Fire, the UFO Shag Harbor. I never covered that one. That's a good one. Never did that one, but that's a good one to get into. There's so many great UFO encounters out there. I mean, it's just, I mean, we're we're replete with them. Randlesham Forest, Kecksburg, you know. There's just plenty of them out there that stand out. And, uh, and I think we've done Kecksburg here. But we have yet to do Rendlesham. So I have to get to that one day, too. <clears throat> Throat's dry tonight. I don't know what's going on with me. Ahem. Uh, a Fox is speaking of Bigfoot. Is it time for a return to the Yeti war against mankind? Oh, a Fox, I believe you're talking about my Sukowski video and his belief in something called Zermatism. And shout out to Jake Carr for pointing me in the direction of that because he's he's where I first learned of Zermatism and Sukowski. Then I made that video, and then subsequently a documentary was released produced by Leonardo DiCaprio on Netflix about Sukowski, which got a, a lot of uh, you know uh, views for me, which was really nice. Kyle's Cookie says someone should make a found footage film of the squonk. Well, that would be just sad. It would just be a wrinkly thing crying in the woods. <laughs> King Groove 713 said, Mac and me, the movie, made me think aliens were invading and dancing in my local McDonald's. That's right. Mac and me. You got to watch out for that one. There we go, team. The Human Yeti War. <clears throat> Dead Minds Podcast just popped in. The Cape Girardeau UFO crash. Let me put it on the list. <clears throat> uh, let me see here. Justin Proper. How you doing, Justin Proper? Listen, folks, subscribe to Justin Proper while you're at it. But Justin Proper, good to see you, my man. Justin says, how you doing, my friend? If you had the opportunity to join an alien spacecraft and discover all the mysteries of the universe, but you could never come back, would you do it? If you would ask me this question 10 years ago, probably yes. Very likely yes. It was a very different place in my life then. And I would have absolutely jumped on the opportunity to unravel all the mysteries of the universe. But now, Justin, I'm a family man. I got a wife and two kids and a mortgage and all that good stuff. So I couldn't leave everybody else holding the bag while I went off to discover the mysteries of the universe. I'd feel a certain way about that. 
So yeah, couldn't do it. <clears throat> Would really miss the opportunity to see the future and uh, you know experience space and all that stuff. But you know, uh, bigger and bigger and better things down here on the planet Earth right now. Bigger and better things. But it's a great question, Justin. Ten years ago, I would have said, yeah. Ten years ago, definitely. Before I met my wife? Oh, yeah, I'd have been gone. I'd have been gone. Let me jot that down, that Cape Girardeau. All right. Thank you, Dead Minds Podcast. <clears throat> and guys, subscribe to Dead Minds Podcast. Uh, yeah, Dead Minds Podcast got a channel here on YouTube. Looks like he's just getting started. Uh, need some subscribers there, so don't hesitate to go ahead and give him a sub. Check out his content there. Absolutely good stuff. Carl Vibe, if I could go in any secret government installation, which one would you go into and why? Nice try, CIA. <laughs> Nice try. Um, I mean, listen, if there were UFOs somewhere and I could get the tour, like who got the tour? What was his name? Jackie Gleason. He got the tour from Nixon. He got to see the UFOs, right? That's how the story goes. But if the if if the powers that be were like, hey, Pete, we like what you're doing here on YouTube. We're going to show you the UFOs. I wouldn't turn down to seeing the UFOs wherever they might be kept. So, yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> Uh, Mark Adelphia music, honest question. Would you go to bed with an alien species? Certainly an interesting topic. One that in our lifetime we may be faced with. Um, well, Mark Adelphia, like I said, I'm a married man, so I don't know if I would captain Kirk my way around a bunch of aliens. Um, I'm also not David Huggins who we are well known as being, a an alien lover or Elizabeth Clare. She was also an alien lover. Uh, or Truman Bathroom, who got divorced because he was in love with an alien and his wife didn't want his, any of his, more of his BS. Uh, and, and who knows if we'd even be compatible like that. We might not even be compatible with alien species. Oh, Ralph G, if I could take my family on the spaceship and get off this rock, I'd see you all later. Yeah, I'd be gone. I'd Star Trek out of here. <clears throat> C2D2 Queen Bee, I am back. You were late, dude. I'm usually about five minutes late on purpose every night. So I think I started at six after, but yeah, if, uh, if I'm not here, uh, by, uh, by five after, then I'm really late. <laughs> then I'm really late, but, uh, but usually I, I don't start till five after anyway. I like to give a minute for the room to kind of fill up. And, uh, and usually I'm waiting for my mods to, uh, kind of pop in and, and see who's modding for the night. Uh, oh, Justin proper says, okay, I'll tell them you aren't interested. LOL. Are they there now? <laughs> are you, are you hanging out with them now? <laughs> dead minds podcast is i really get a chance to catch you live thanks for the plug not a lot of content yet oh well hey dead minds we all start out somewhere i remember posting my first video on the channel and it was terrible i was drunk um it was about uh i don't even know what it was about it was about wizards it was about wizards Mm -hmm. I think my first video, I've taken it down so far. I think it's, it's not on the channel anymore, but I think it is on Patreon. I don't have a lot of stuff on Patreon. I'm not one of these people who makes exclusive content for Patreon. I've got one tier because I don't make a lot of stuff on Patreon. I don't provide you anything special on there. It's just like, hey, if you want to donate a dollar because you like what I'm doing here, I appreciate it. But there, there's a few things up there. There's the first, very first video back when I had a co-host. There is a video from a previous channel where I did a whole uh, thing about the Rosicrucians and Johannes Kelpius, and there's an exclusive video that I can't post on YouTube uh, because it's on uh, BitChute. <clears throat> uh, and, you know, that's just how it goes. <clears throat> that's just how it goes. Um... <laughs> Big Steve, I'll go to bed with all the aliens. Well, there you go. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> Justin Proper says, I cannot confirm nor deny that. Well, if the aliens are there now, then say hello for me. Pete used to do a show with Ed McMahon. Fun fact. Uh, good old Ed McMahon. 
Uh, you know, I, why did I think of, um, I, well, I'm mean, of course publishers clearinghouse, but I, for some reason it made me think of lifestyles of the rich and famous champagne wishes and caviar dreams. <laughs> oh yeah. Fun stuff. Fun stuff. Sapphire elf. And I'm late again. Oh, it's all right. Sapphire elf. We've still got 10 minutes. We've still got 10 more minutes. Don't worry about it. Justin Proper says, LOL, imagine if I just disappeared tomorrow and this was the last you'd hear from me. One may think I wasn't joking, but no one would ever know the difference. Well, Justin, if this is your goodbye before you leave with the moon, man, well, I, I wish you'd lock in space. I think that you probably encounter a whole world of mystery and intrigue out there that could never be replicated here on Earth. <laughs> Ginger Viking Jesus for two dollars says Gleep Glorp says hi, Pete. Yeah, there we go. Say hi to the aliens for me. Gleep Glorp says hi back. Thank you, Ginger. I appreciate that, man. Thanks so much. <laughs> oh yeah, C two D two Queen B points out that Captain Kirk was one brave guy. Trusting the doc would be able to treat all those alien diseases. That's a Star Trek episode reserved for the few. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, you don't want to get a social disease from an extraterrestrial. You don't need that. Who knows? You never know. That, you know, I guess on Star Trek, they probably screen for that kind of stuff before you're signed up on the, uh, on the spaceship. So, yeah. No, the monster says, if you do leave, then I can only assume that you agree with the assessment that Ohio sucks, and that's why you left Justin Proper. Oh, there you go. Big Steve says, Proper Jeremy, never leave me. Proper Jenny, never leave me, rather. Proper Jenny. We do remember the days of Proper Jenny. That's a while back now, though. The, that was a while back. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, comical days. We have fun. We have fun around here, folks. We have good times. We do have good times, and it's and it's all because of you guys. It really is. Arcanum. Hey, Arcanum. Hey, listen, everybody. Arcanum just posted a new video today, so go check it out. It's about vampires. Arcanum says, I wish I could leave with the moon men. That would be pretty cool, providing they're not hostile. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to be drug away. And Look, Arcanum, you don't want to wind up in, in a Princess Leia situation when she's with Jabba the Hutt. You don't need that kind of stuff going on. You know, you definitely want to make sure the moon men are cool because you don't need that kind of business. That's not a way to go. But uh, a side note, Arcanum just posted that new video today about vampires. It's really good. Go check it out on Arcanum's channel and give her a sub. She's doing hard work over there. And uh, well, you're really close to cracking. Like, uh, let me see how many. I, I just noticed your sub count earlier. I was like, you don't need that many more to hit a milestone here. So, guys, go sub. Go sub to Arcanum's channel. She does good work. Chris Corkum says, Princess Lay. Uh. <laughs> so yeah. Um the McPherson tapes, this has been a fun one. Uh I think uh I think this is uh there we go. Tina dropped Arcanum's vampire vid. Thank you, Tina. Yeah, it's brand new. Edited very well. Arcanum does a great job with these edits. Really, really great looking videos. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. If I wasn't so lazy, I'd have to edit too. I'd have to make videos and edit them. But I just go live. You know, that's what I do. That's how I, that's how I manage to get it in. Otherwise, I'd never post a video on the channel. If I didn't go live every night, this channel would be bereft of content because I don't have the time to record videos. Mecca Raid of 42. Mecca Raid. How you doing, Mecca? Thanks for coming in tonight. Thank you for being here. Thanks for bringing some folks with you, too. Much appreciated. <clears throat> Mark Delphi Music says, The Serpo Exchange Program is one of the best true stories I've ever heard. I'd love to hear more. Mark, I made a video about the Serpo Program. There's a short video on the channel right now called Serpo. It's about the Earth-Human Exchange. Some contend that the Serpo story was information injected into the UFO community by Richard Doty. So there is a question of the veracity of the Serpo claims. I, personally, I like the Serpo story a lot. I think it's very interesting. I think that it really picks up where the idea of a treaty between the governments and the aliens kind of leaves off. 
and uh, and it also kind of buttons up the Roswell stuff. So Roswell's not the end of the story because there is Serpo. <clears throat> oh, Mark Delphi Music, I already watched it. It's great. Thank you. Thank you. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. Yeah, Serpo's a great story. Uh, and for those of you who aren't familiar, like I said, there's a short video. There's, there's, the, there's the link. Tina's got the link. Tina, you're the best. Thank you, Tina. Tina is the best. I mean, when it comes to mods, Tina, you are tops. I appreciate you very much. Thank you for dropping those links with the quitness. I, I mean, like I, every time I reference one of these obscure videos that I've made or, or anything like that, she's just right there with it. And I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Chris Corkum says Leia in chains, a Seattle cosplay band. Is that real? I remember there was a band I used to like called warp 11. I don't know if they're still together anymore, but they were a star Trek band. Um, everything they, they, they did was about star Trek. So yeah, there was lots of great, lots of great tunes. If you're a Star Trek fan, uh, by Warp Eleven, uh, very kind of like rock and roll, like uh, poppy, pop punky kind of thing going on. But uh, but yeah, very very good stuff. <clears throat> very good stuff. So listen, folks, we are running up on the end of the stream right now. Sad to say, that's how it goes, though. The time does fly when we're having fun. Oh, Chris Corkum. I love Warp 11, and my favorite is Stovacore. Oh, yeah, dude. Stovacore. That's where the Klingons go when they die. Stovacore. <laughs> I died in battle, baby. The field of honor, baby. With my blood white, baby. I got my bachelor, baby. Good stuff. Good stuff. So listen, here, let me play the thing real quick. This is the thing I made, so I play this. And then you guys know to check out the Patreon. So here we go. This kind of broadcasting only works in this country. Here in America, we put on the programs that you enjoy, and we simply come to you and ask you to support them. Help this system of broadcasting work. We need to hear from you. We also are looking for a lot of new subscribers right now. So please, become a new subscriber and help us reach our goal of 12,000 new subscribers. But the most important thing is to get that money in and into our studios right away so that we can bring you more programs like this. And you can do that on a Visa, MasterCard, or American Express. All right. You know how we do here, folks. We have a good time, and then we end on a high note. I like to keep it up. I like to keep it pumped. I like to keep it jazz. I hope you got a smile on your face when we say goodbye. I hope you still want us to hang around, but we got to go. Because if you still want us to hang around, then we're doing something right, right? So listen, thank you for being here. Thank you for hanging out. Thanks to our moderators, Tina Tomaszewski, Mimetic Delirium, Big Steve, and Macarana42. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Thanks for being here, everybody. Thanks for supporting the stream. Thanks for believing in what we do here. Thanks for enjoying the good time with us. Really, I mean it. It is not the same without you. Without you, it is not the same. And I see names in chat. I know who's coming back night after night. I'm telling you. You guys make this what it is. So thank you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for your energy. Thanks for your contributions to the conversations. Thanks for being the best audience. The YouTube channel can have the community of the curious, the night people. Thank you. Thank you to Eli McGinn's, Darius Munchausen, and Ginger Viking Jesus for your generous super chats and super stickers. They are never expected, but they are always appreciated. So, thank you again for being here and tuning in. Check out the description of the video for links to our social media and places you can support the show, like the Spring Store and the Patreon. Until next time, I'm Pete. This has been the Creepy Little Book, and I hope you do me a favor. Stay creeped out.